Caroline Norbury and I'm Chief Executive of Creative England. So we're at an event at Google today and we have about 100 businesses from different parts of the country and what we're looking at is money. How do creative businesses access different types of finance? So my name is Doug Richard and I run a social purpose business called The School for Startups. So young companies have quite a few choices right now in where and how to get money. And it can be bewildering to know where do you start and where do you go. And I think the, the metric that clears it up is to remember that money costs money. And therefore you're going out and you're essentially buying money. And what you use to buy the money with may be shares of your own business. You may be giving shares of your business return for money. That's an equity finance. Sometimes it's much more straightforward. If you borrow money, you literally are paying money for the money. That's the interest rate on it. So all money costs money, and some money is cheaper than others. Now, on a purely financial scale, it's best to start with the cheapest money. My name's Alan Ward. I'm a director of Alan Ward Consulting, and we're a business improvement consultancy. Only spend your money when you're sure about things or spend it in order to become sure about things. So before you even start getting extra money, you'll have a bit, just be careful how you spend it. And you can get a long way on a relatively short amount of money if you're pretty smart. Business angels are the most common form of funding in the UK for a typical entrepreneur, far more than VCs. VCs tend to be more associated with millions rather than a few hundred thousand. A lot of people approach me for angel investment. I'm not quite sure how many per year, I would guess, directly and indirectly, maybe a thousand. I make one to two investments a year, though this year I've been quite radical and thrown caution to the winds and made three. So the odds of getting investment from me on a pure scale are quite unlikely. Having said that, the odds go up tremendously if for whatever reason I choose to get to know you. In other words, if we for whatever reason get to know each other either socially or through a structured business relationship because then the risk goes down because I'm starting to know the person that I might invest in. And I rarely or never invest in somebody whom I have just met. The typical money a business angel would look to do is somewhere between 100,000 and 500,000. So it's a fair old batch of cash. And the nice thing about a business angel is you can get one who's often in your area and is looking for more than just a fast return. They're interested to help, they're interested to support, they're there if you want to pick up the telephone and talk to somebody. And a VC has a very much more aggressive, typically more aggressive approach, will look for greater returns faster. When I look at the person, I don't ask a very complicated question. I ask, do I like them or could I like them? Because I no longer have the patience, if I ever had the patience, to work with people I don't like. So for the individual or the very small business, I would always tend to say look at a business angel first before you get to the stage of needing a VC. What you have to do is to think very carefully about what is the right type of money for your project or for your company. So for example, something like a game or a film where you really won't know whether or not it's going to make any money until you've made it and tried it, so that's highly risky. So then you have to go and find money either from your friends or your family, or if you want to go and get institutional funds, you go to a venture capital trust. Um, and th basically the rationale is that those people are prepared to lose that money. So I ask myself 10 questions about any company that approaches me, or any idea that I have myself about the idea. So for example, the first question I ask is what problem do you solve or desire do you fulfill? And astonishingly enough, people cannot always tell me. It is not enough to, for you to believe in it. I want to know that you've reached out into the world and talked to people, investigated, researched, and tried to understand what the world thinks of your idea. Think very carefully as a business about what your, what your product is, what your idea is, and then try and find um, the, a source of funding for it which meets its own um, distinctive qualities. I always like an ambitious entrepreneur. And therefore, when somebody comes to me and says, I don't see any particular limits on my potential reach or growth, that always excites me. Having said that, if they say that when it's perfectly obvious that there are potential limits on their reach or growth, I think they're just silly. Go away and do your research. Always, always, always. Become familiar as you can with all the aspects that affect you, the market, the potential customers, the competition and intellectual property. The real question comes down to one of ambition. As an investor, I can respect somebody who wants to grow a business organically and slowly, but I may or may not invest in that business because I need to see a potential for a return on my investment. 
Thus, ambition and aspiration play a huge amount in my investment decisions as in any investor's decision. Thus, people who see boundaries and walls are less likely to get investment.